Good morning, stackers. Welcome to our live recording session for tomorrow's Money in the Morning. I'm headed to Philadelphia in three weeks, so we're going to start getting this ahead. So seeing that most uh, financial planning news is a little bit evergreen, we'll, uh, we'll schedule them out, but we'll also be willing and ready to uh, insert something if there's a big market drop or something crazy happens. How, long, how many times that happened? Maybe three times a year, right? So not much. All right. Today we're going to talk Bobby Bonilla and we're going to talk about ripping off veterans. <laughs> Just absolutely horrible. Just couldn't be, couldn't be worse. All right. Okay, that sounds good. Still a little loud. That's good. All right, guys. I think we're about ready to go. Let's shut down a couple of these things here. Write a quick...
gets you there. All right, we got a fantastic episode for you today. So, Laura, why don't we get this party started, huh? And now, your first Money in the Morning headline. All right, our first headline today comes to us from ESPN. We don't often do ESPN headlines, do we? Happy Bobby Bonilla Day, writes Darren Ravel. His annual $1.19 million payday is here. Imagine if you got a $1.19 million payday once a year. Let's talk about how this works. Today, the New York Mets will pay Bobby Bonilla another installment of $1,193,248. And don't forget this part, 20 cents. The beginning of July from 2011 to 2035, Every year, the Mets make the payment as part of deferring the $5.9 million the Mets owed him for, from the 2000 season, a year in which he didn't play for the team because they released him in January. As noted last year, Benia's agent worked out a deal that deferred payment with an 8% annual interest rate. With eight payments now in, Benia's now collected $9,545,986.60 there are 18 more payments due to Benia through 2035 when all the payments are made Benia will have turned that 5.9 million dollars into 29.8 million dollars 5.9 million into 29.8 million but that's not all Benia also has deferred money that's being paid by the Mets and the Baltimore Orioles who took Benia for the final year and a half, 1995 to 1996 of his first Mets contract, a five-year deal signed in December, 1991 for $29 million. The two teams split a $12.5 million payment, which comes in 25 installments. That deal started in 2004. So Benia has received 14 payments worth a total of 7 million and he'll receive another five and a half million through 2028. So to recap, Bania has received $15.3 million in deferred money. Over the next 18 years, he has another $27 million to go. All this looks even better from his home in Sarasota, Florida, where there's no state income tax. How about that? And I got to say a big thanks to, to two people who, who sent this to me. Uh, who sent it to me? Uh, um, Jeff sent this to me and Dylan sent it to me. I mean, it, it was just bam, bam, Jeff and then Dylan. So thanks to both of you guys for sending me this piece to talk about today. Cause there's a lot, there are a ton of lessons here today. Aren't there? Number one is this is kind of like the lottery. Like we talked about earlier, but, but, but Nia's end, it actually was a little different because he was working with an agent to set this thing up so that it paid him for a long, long period of time. And there's some brilliance there. I mean, number one, if you've got the fortitude to think about, hey, baseball is, is a sport that I'm not going to get to play forever, right? And even if you work some desk job, wherever you work, this might not be something I do forever. So let's put some money in the deferred payment payment fund. Let's pay myself today what I need to live. And let's make sure that I can live later on. And you get those deferred, you get those deferred payments coming later on. You're like, glad I thought of that. At the time you think I need that money now, but later on you think it's brilliant. And it's brilliant enough on Benia's part. I mean, this dude hasn't played baseball in a long time and he's getting these massive payouts and he's getting them for a long time. So good for him. But the big thing here is also the idea of compounding interest, isn't it? Because he took these contracts, which were big already, and he made sure they had an 8% rider on them. So he wouldn't have to invest the money in the stock market, get 8% there. Instead, he'd get this guaranteed, if, if, I could get, if you could get a guaranteed 8%, how awesome would that be? And another thing, by the way, about 8%, we high-five ourselves and Bobby's, we high-five Bobby and his agent uh, for doing this. But it's funny, people will say, hey, my, my credit card is only at 12%. And they high-five themselves, right? Hey, my credit card, the average interest rate on a credit card now is what, 23%? And high-fiving themselves because they got one that has 12. And if you could get 12, that would be unbelievable. So Citibank and Barclay and Chase, Capital One, high-fiving themselves every day when you think 12% is a, is a great deal. But anyway, Bobby Bonilla gets eight, which is a great deal. 
8% guaranteed interest. And he turns this big amount of money into a monster amount of money. The power of deferral, the power of compounding interest. I think that all those things are things that our little brain has trouble processing, right? We talk about the rule of 72 sometimes. Take 72, divide the interest rate you think you're going to get into 72, and that tells you the number of years it's going to take money to double. So uh, Benia's money every nine years, these millions of dollars he's getting every nine years get, get, uh, get, get much, much bigger. Defer, defer payments and compounding interest for the win. A lot of great, a lot of great stories here. Uh, so thanks to those two guys for sending the story our way. Hey, going to take a second and say hi to our friends on Facebook watching. You know, we do this live without a net, uh, no editing. We do this live without a net and in front of a studio audience. Uh, we've got uh, Lori and Susan here. It seems like at one point our video froze up because uh, Susan says, uh, Joe froze. Lori says, uh, Joe, come out of the freezer. <laughs> and uh, Kimberly's here. And says, I take a guaranteed eight percent over stocks any day. I would, t- if I could get guaranteed eight percent. There's this thing called the risk premium. Kimberly already knows this. Risk premium is the amount of excess interest you have to get to make something worthwhile, right? So, if if I can get eight percent guaranteed, stocks would have to pay maybe twelve for me to do that versus an. 8% guarantee. Like I, I'd, I'd have to have much, much, much higher. So forget it. I'm taking the, I'm taking the guarantee. Now it, it isn't all actually just uh, great stuff here. I did forget one thing, which is that Bonilla has to bet that these companies are going to remain solvent. And I don't know the ins and outs of his contract, but generally speaking, if the company goes bankrupt, they might be able to wipe these out. And if they can wipe them out, you know, whenever you take a deferred payment, you're worried about the the institution on the other side. So let's say that you have a pension fund. A pension fund is kind of what Benia set up for himself here. If you have a pension fund, you have to worry about the stability of the people paying the fund. Uh, and that's a problem. I mean, look at uh, how shaky things are in Illinois in uh, New Jersey, as an example, two places where the pension funds are tough. My dad worked for General Motors. They had changes to his pension. He actually still has one, but sometimes people don't get the pension that they they thought they were going to get. The pension uh, um, uh, uh, guarantee, the pension guarantee, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get the name of it, but there's a pension guarantee fund and you will end up getting a piece of your pension, assuming that your pension's insured. But uh, with General Motors, they didn't have to go that far. All right. Uh, uh, Susan said, it is an amazing story. Great strategy. I, I totally agree. I was glad that our friends uh, brought that to our attention. Let's move on to our second headline, which uh, comes to us from CNN. And this is ugly. This is by Nicole Chavez. Thieves emptied the bank account of America's oldest living veteran. In fact, as I was looking this up, not only is this oldest living veteran, Oldest living American, oldest living person in America just got scammed. Uh, Let's read this. Someone stole the identity of the oldest living veteran in America and emptied his bank account. The family of 112-year-old Richard Overton said they don't know how a thief got Overton's social security and personal checking account numbers. They discovered the issue Thursday when one of the World War II veterans' cousins made a deposit into his account. Quote, I looked at it. What the hell are these debits? Overton's cousin, Volma Overton Jr., told CNN affiliate KXAN. Several purchases of savings bonds with Treasury Direct were made in recent months. And by Thursday, there was nothing left in the account. It's a shock. It hurts. It hurts tremendously, Overton Jr. said. While family doesn't know who may have stolen Overton's money, his cousin said, quote, it'd be terrible to know somebody who's been that close to him has used him like that. His family wouldn't discuss the amount of money that was taken, but said it was a considerable amount. Overton, who now lives in Austin, Texas, volunteered for service back in 1942. He became a member of the Army's 188th Aviation Engineer Battalion, an all-black unit that served on various islands in the Pacific. 2013, he was 
was honored by then President Barack Obama during a Veterans Day ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. He is the oldest man in America, according to the Gerontology Research Group. In 2016, his family launched a GoFundMe page to help raise funds to pay for Overton's round-the-clock home care. People have donated more than $330,000 since then. His family said the money from the online fundraising page is intact and in a separate bank account. Police are investigating the incident. It's horrible. There is a special place in hell. And I believe our friend Susan, who's here with us today, uh, gave us this. So thank you very much, Susan. I can't believe let's just get past the whole thing about scamming the oldest living living vet. Let's talk about uh, just this scam in particular. The relative said that this, you know, this could be somebody that, that he knew. Um, and in the past, that has been the case with a lot of senior citizens, that people around them are the people that scam them. There was a study I read, and this is, this is a good 15 years old, this study. So I'm sure the numbers are different that uh, I think it was two out of three. Uh, scams against senior citizens were instigated by people that they knew. Now, 15 years later, we're in the age of the internet. And I don't know if Mr. Overton gets on the internet, but there's a couple of things that could have happened, especially this whole treasury direct thing. Like that, that seems pretty like taking the money and using it to buy treasuries to then launder the money, using the treasury to launder the money, kind of sophisticated. So, and I'm not, Maybe Mr. Overton's family are some sophisticated individuals, but that's kind of a kind of a sophisticated uh, deal there. So there's a good chance that this is a professional thing, especially also because they took the money a little at a time, right? And when you see professional scams going on, they take a little money out, a little money out, a little money out, and they notice that you're not looking, and they take they take it just a little bit of they keep like leeching money out of the account, so. I don't know that it was somebody that, that knew him, which, which brings me to uh, one thing that very much could have happened. We're in the middle of a move, moving, uh, mom's moving. The basement is moving, as I announced on our newsletter last week, uh, stackybenjamins.com forward slash stacker. Actually, I haven't put that in the stacker. We're going to talk about that in the stacker this week. So if you want to get in on that, <laughs> hit on that news that you just heard now, uh, subscribe to the stacker. But we talked about it on our SB Live uh, Facebook uh, hour long, just kind of asked me anything that OG and I sometimes do on Thursdays at noon central, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. But but in the process of moving, there's a ton of garbage. I have a garbage can sitting here right next to me. And a shredder is not overstated. Like the number of scams that I've seen where people just go through your trash and they get so much great stuff out of your trash, so many numbers, so many identifiers about who you are, that it, that it isn't hard. It isn't difficult at all. And a few years ago, we had uh, um, someone on the show that was a former scammer, um, and I'm not getting the name right now but was a former scammer and talked about, listen, it, it, it is super easy to scam people just from their trash. So this idea of a shredder, even, even in the age when a lot of stuff is online, that's, that's number one. Number two here is, the, is checking your accounts periodically. With everything, everything uh, automated like it is, it's easy not to check because, hey, I've got, I've, I've got my bills automatically coming out. I got my paycheck automatically deposited. I don't need to go look at my bank account and see if the number looks kind of right. Well, scammers know that, which is why they take just a little bit at a time, right? They're just a leech bleeding you until you figure it out. So um, the power of, and longtime listeners to this show, well, this show hasn't been around long, to Stacky Benjamins know, I like this idea of a weekly meeting. And it's only 15 minutes. It's not a long meeting where you set aside time and you go through, and you go through all of your transactions. By the way, there's the power of live uh, podcasting right there. Getting a call right now and didn't turn off my ringer. Good job, Joe. I've done this how many times? We've done like over 850 episodes of the Stacky Benjamin show and five days a week of this for a few months. Still not turned off my ringer. Nice work. But the point is, is that 
is that this idea of, of having a meeting once a week where you have time set aside to look at things. And especially if you're married, if you're married, it's, it's fantastic for communication back and forth. So everybody's on the, on the same page. If you're single, it's great to have that time set aside just so you remember to do it and take that time seriously. And if you take it seriously, it's only 15 minutes a week. You just do your checks of everything. It's great. I'm on a nonprofit board. One of the things that I instituted on the nonprofit board was our treasurer is, is a very nice person, great person, but take the bank statements for the nonprofit and hand them to somebody else and just check and balance. And it doesn't say anything about my friend, Lydia, love Lydia, but let's have at least two people look at the bank statements. Uh, so shredder checks and balances, big stuff. All right. That's our second uh, headline. Let's say hello again to our friends hanging out here on Facebook land. Uh, Roger gets the name of Pension Guarantee Benefit Fund. Nice job. The retirement answer man comes through. I don't know what's going on with my brain this morning. Uh, you know what it is, Roger? Only half a cup of coffee so far. That's the deal. Uh, and Julie's here with us and says, would you include your pension in your retirement savings or consider it icing on the cake? Uh, no. Well, it depends on Julie and on how secure that pension fund is, right? Going back to our first headline, I think that if the pension fund is from a fairly secure place, I'd at least include it for the next 10 to 15 years. And then beyond that, I might include it, but at a smaller number, just in case things go bad. Obviously, the more conservative we can be in the financial plan, the better it gets for us. I really like if the financial plan works at 6%, why would I not do the financial plan at 6%? And then when I get eight, I've got extra money to do extra things. Uh, and ZZ's here with us. Hey, ZZ, good to see you. Uh, happy that you're with us. All right. Uh, now it's time for the big idea of this here podcast. And during the big idea segment, we take both of these headlines, which seem to have nothing to do with each other, right? Oldest living veteran getting scammed. Bobby Benia setting himself up this pension for life doing a nice job there. How do we take these two, put these two together? We're going to do that here in just a second. But first, got to talk about Tiller for just a second, because if you're somebody who tracks your money, and we just talked about tracking your money, Tiller is a great way to do that because you get not an interface that every app has, and every app has some interface that you don't like or some piece of the interface that you don't like. With Tiller, you get the magic of a spreadsheet. Now, immediately I say spreadsheet and some people go, ah, wait a minute. Well, guess what? They've got templates at Tiller. So you didn't have to set up the spreadsheet. And then you get the easy button that you press because all of your transactions can come right into that spreadsheet and Tiller makes it super easy. So whether it's your bank account, your investments, you can have it all on one page. You can set up multiple pages. Tiller makes it as easy or as complicated as you want. Head to stackybedjamins.com forward slash Tiller. And that supports Money in the Morning because they send us a thank you if you go through us. Uh, and you'll also see the magic of having fantastic tracking tools so that you don't get scammed. All right, let's go through our two big ideas here. Big idea number one, Bobby Benia cha-ching in the cash register, baseball player, sets himself up this big fat annuity payment where every year he gets well over a million dollars. And he's turned a $9 million payout into $25 million. And the takeaway there, deferred payments and compounding interest for the win. Love that. Love setting that up. A second headline, oldest living vet scammed. Uh, somebody raided his bank account, pretended they were him, used treasury bills or uh, at least treasury direct, the government website to turn the money into treasuries, laundered them that way, and then uh, ostensibly took the treasuries and sold them. Uh, and the takeaway, not just, we, we talk all the time about being safe online. We didn't talk about that today. But even the importance of a shredder still today, you can't, you can't overlook uh, and checking your stuff. But I think the bigger idea here is the one I mentioned earlier from this nonprofit, and that's two sets of eyes. You know, I understand that a lot of people that listen to our shows are like doing their financial planning themselves. Len Penzo's told me, he's like, you know what, Joe, because he and I will talk finance. He'll go, I love talking to you about finance, but you know, it's funny when I talk about finance, with you, I get these great ideas, but I'd never hire a financial planner in a million years. I, I just, I just wouldn't hire one, and that's fine. 
that that is a okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But only having one set of eyes on the books always gives you an Achilles heel. And I like having somebody in my corner who covers my Achilles heel. So as an example, my coach, uh, I have a coach that I meet with three times a month. And my coach thinks about the world much differently than I do. People that know Mary Lou, know Mary Lou and Joe don't have a ton in common. We have, we, we look at the world very, very differently. And that's why she's my coach because she covers my Achilles heel. You want that with your bank statements. We look with this nonprofit, two people look at the different bank statements. I think it's a big, big idea to have two sets of eyes. And I think that's where we're going to leave it today. Hey, thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, thank you to whoever's been calling me. Thanks to my ability to uh, not hit uh, do not disturb. <laughs> Go stack some Benjamins. We'll see you next time back here. Money in the Morning is created by Joe Saul Cihai and is brought to our channels by our producer and engineer, Richie Rudder Reese. Stacking Benjamins and Money in the Morning are for entertainment purposes. Before making moves, consult with your financial advisor. Looking for training sessions? Kathleen Sullivan's has a great suite of Stacking Benjamins tools, so head on over to learn.stackingbenjamins.com. Hoping to chat with us on the web? Say hello to Shannon Cowan, our social media guru and community manager in our Facebook group. She can be found at stackingbenjamins.com forward slash basement. From the basement, I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. See you tomorrow. Oh, that was fun. That's great. I make a big deal and not turn off my ringer. And I just end the call and still don't turn off my ringer. Nice job, Joe. And my soundboard today, I don't know what the heck happened there. That it, it, it just, during the intro, it's super quiet. And then I crank it up for the end and obviously you hear then, then it blares. So I don't know. Don't know, but we made it through it. Thanks, everybody. So much fun. All right. Uh, hopefully you're back here doing another one of these today. We got to get caught up. But um, uh, if you're hanging out on Facebook this afternoon, look for us. See you later. Bye.